Hi, I'm Saskia from rawfreedom.co.uk and today I'm going to be demonstrating the delicious raw food recipe chia cardamom raspberry pudding. This is, I relatively recently discovered chia pudding and I am in love with it and this is one of my versions. So we start off by making the cardamom milk which is basically just half a cup of almonds that have been soaked overnight and rinsed. Two dates. I generally like to use medjool dates because they're nice and soft and fresh and they're easy to blend. And you want to remove the pips, the stones. Add in 200 millilitres of water. I generally use filtered water um, because it's nice and easy and it's much better. It kind of, you know, using a filter jug is brilliant for getting rid of a lot of the chemicals and chlorine as well. And then you're going to be adding in just one cardamom pod, just one cardamom pod. And this is going to give the milk a really light but delicious flavour. If you're not that keen on cardamoms, you can use other spices to flavour. So you can use things like cinnamon, ginger, whatever kind of takes your fancy, you can get creative with it. And then you're just going to blend it all together. What you're doing here when you're making, this is a version of almond milk, basically it's a flavoured almond milk and you are just blending until the nuts are as fine as you can get them. strain them and you can use a nut milk bag or a muslin like I'm using here or you can even use a clean tea towel. Quite often if I'm at somebody's house and I haven't got anything to use I'll use one of their clean tea towels to strain my almond milk. And you're squeezing all the liquid out so that you've got a really lovely, smooth and creamy cardamom almond milk. And this is going to be the base for your chia seed pudding. So you keep squeezing until there's no liquid left to squeeze out. Get the pulp as dry as you can. And people quite often say, well, what can I do with the pulp? But actually, the pulp doesn't taste of anything or taste of very little because it's all in the actual milk that you've just squeezed through. What you can do is you can feed it to your birds. It makes great compost. Um, you can use it to put in dehydrated crackers and things like that. But it literally, it doesn't have any flavour. If you taste it, it's a bit like sawdust. So it doesn't really add anything other than bulk to anything that you're going to dehydrate, so I tend to not bother because I prefer to actually have something that really has a flavour. So to your milk, you are going to add three tablespoons of chia seeds. Now chia seeds are incredibly good for you. They are full of essential fatty acids, which we need for our brains and for our joints and actually for our cells. You know, our cells actually don't function properly if they don't have enough essential fatty acids. And you're gonna just stir it. And it's important to stir straight away because what happens is it starts to coagulate, starts to stick together really quite quickly as soon as it gets wet. So give it a good stir. And then, 
You'll notice nothing much is really kind of happening. It's just, it just looks like liquid with seeds floating in it. And you can just put that to one side whilst you get on with your raspberry puree. So for your raspberry puree, you are going to be taking just a handful of raspberries and push, pushing them through a sieve. If you've got a high speed blender, you can just do this in your high speed blender and it will break up all the seeds, the pips. But if you don't have a high speed blender, the pips actually are a bit kind of annoying, the texture isn't actually very nice in your pudding. So essentially what you're doing here is making a raspberry puree, like a bit like a jam, that you're going to top your chia seed pudding with. This is such a pretty looking pudding. The colours, the, the colour combination of the chia seed pudding and the raspberries is just absolutely stunning. And again, you know, with this you can use other fruit, you can use strawberries, you can use mango, you can use kiwi, any kind of fruit that you love. You can make a puree by either blending or sieving it. So what we have here now is basically just mostly pips. So we're just going to scrape the last, the last of the raspberry puree off the bottom. And just put that to one side. And come back to our chias, which will have started to set even more. And then what happens is they stick to the bottom. So they start kind of settling at the bottom and getting thick and settled and stuck together and what you want to do is break them up. You want to make sure that they're, that they're evenly spread throughout the milk and what you'll be do, wanting to do is like every 10 minutes or so, every 5-10 minutes you'll be wanting to come back and do this. Come back and just break up where it's all settled at the bottom until you've got a nice even spread and it's gone quite kind of gloopy and sticky. Once it's gone gloopy and sticky, you can then put it into your jars or into your glasses. I mean, I quite often, I'll either use these or I might use, um, you know, some sort of, just some normal glasses like this. Uh, anything that kind of takes your fancy in terms of something that looks pretty to serve up a pudding. Okay, so this has been soaking now for about sort of 10-15 minutes and you can see it's sort of gone quite kind of gloopy and quite consistently spread throughout, the seeds are consistently spread throughout the milk and this is the point where you can add a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla essence. You can add this in at the beginning as well when you first put it all into the bowl together doesn't really matter when you add it in. And just stir that through. And divide your chia between the two containers. I can't wait to eat this, it's so delicious. <gasps> okay, and then you just top your chia with your raspberries. And you get this beautiful colour contrast going on. Just spread it out to the sides so you've got a nice even topping. And 
and then just top with a raspberry like that and then put them in the fridge and leave them to actually set fully which takes anything up to half an hour, an hour and you can leave them in the fridge for 24, 48 hours and they're still absolutely fine. Um, if you love the look of this you can also get the recipe in my recipe book and there are loads more really easy and delicious main meals, soups, puddings, everything, everything. So yeah, enjoy it, it's absolutely delicious this one.